Hey guys, Rune here, and we're going to do something a little bit different today. So, I got this game yesterday, Jurassic World Evolution, and it is freaking awesome. Um, it's a simulation theme park game that you research and fossil dig and genome therapy the crap out of, you know, getting just the right dinosaurs to then be in your park with just the right temperament and just the right survivability and just the right everything to make a good amusement park that won't kill all of your visitors. And it's really awesome. I've been enjoying the crap out of it. Now, I played nine hours straight yesterday. It was my first, like, ever thing. It was super cool. But the reason why we're doing this right now in the um, beginning screen here is uh, while I was at work, I stumbled upon an IGN review that gave this um, game a 4.8 out of 10. And I was like, what? So then I read this review, and it's, 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 by, a, it's by an interest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the link of the interview in the description um, down below so you guys have a chance to read the review and his scathing review on everything from from you know going and finding fossils to researching things to you know having some uh what would it, less i wouldn't call it, it like dumbed down versions of like theme park taking care of things but really this game i think in my per you know and, and and he's entitled to his personal opinion right um we're we are all entitled to our personal opinions but when you are followed by that many people on Twitter and that many people read your articles, I, I feel like you have a sense of responsibility to be a little bit more objective than just hating on simulation games in general. Because that's kind of the premise that I got. And it moved me so much, guys, to the point where I was like, you know what? I want to make a video to my small community <laughs> to make sure that at least you guys know because this guy's changed minds Cha like people were on the fence and they're like ah oh, no i'm not going to pick it up like that, that that'd be terrible these people have worked so long and hard to make this game really interesting and unique and what's really cool about that is all the little dinosaurs they all have their own ecosystems and their own likes and dislikes and communi communications and social structures and mannerisms that are specific guys specific to what is supposed to be represented in um, dinosaur everyday walks in life and stuff like that, like the the nuances of how a first um, a first created dinosaur is introduced into the um, the I don't know what you want to call it, like the little area that you have, like the little the little park spot for you, like his little biome, and there, like like let's say you you introduce a new Triceratops into a biome that already has a couple of triceratops this triceratops will like first be like oh cool i'm free and like run to water or food or something and then when they interact with those uh, like new dinosaurs they do like this introductory kind of like um sniffing about kind of a thing it's kind of like this really cool mannerism stuff and we've spent you know way too long talking about just one aspect but i wanted to first have some coffee with you guys before you get into it because i know like for me when i, I don't do a lot of post recording stuff to where like i don't post i don't pre-record gameplay and then i talk through it while um while it plays and uh, i'm sorry about that i've done it a couple of times with world of war play or world of warships carrier gameplay um, but that was a little bit more specific and fine tuned. I wanted to get my my thoughts out on how I feel about this article and stuff before I show you guys my let's play. And again, I'm nine hours into it, and I don't find one issue with this game for what it is, right? Um, and that's that's really cool. I've I've been playing games since I was 15. I'm 32 now, so do the math. That's 17 years of me doing things from console to PC to console to PC again to all the different things. I have experience playing all genres from simulation to strategy to turn-based to first-person shooters to RPGs to action RPGs to MMOs to you name it. I've done it. I even have, you know, some flight simulators and stuff like that. You know, you guys know. You guys watch the watch the episodes. So that's not really an issue. Issue here is is I think this guy has an issue with simulation games and the purpose of what Jurassic World is. Now, I have not followed this. I am not a fanboy of Jurassic World Evolution at all. I saw like one video a while ago 
um, by someone that got like an alpha um, account thing and they just kind of like did like a really quick um, one, onesie show through thing. Um, and then I it popped up on Steam like, oh, Jurassic World. And I saw another YouTuber person that actually has a Let's Play of it. And then I started watching it and I was like, you know what? I want to buy this and play it myself. And I am not disappointed. Um, I got the deluxe version. It's $59.99. It's like sixty two ninety nine with the Steam um, tax and, and and whatnot, and I think it's a, it's a good it's a good purchase. And let me tell you why: it's beautiful. The dinosaurs are amazing. The 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 little nuances that each of the dinosaurs have, the way you go about getting things, it's all super cool. So, without further ado, let me just you know I'm not I don't want to be too negative on the on the reviewer that reviewed and gave like a, a really nasty review. Um, it's, it sounded to me a lot like this guy is, I don't know his background. I didn't Google him, um, apart from knowing that he is, um, a IGN contributor, you know, guy. Um, but like the sense that I got from him is that, you know, there's a lot of whining about the small mundane tasks you have to do in a simulation game for your citizens or for your population for them to be happy. It's like, have you played The Sims at all? No. Okay. Have you played um, The Sim City? Okay. Maybe not. Okay. So what about um, the the big city games or Anno twenty two oh five or twenty two seventies or like any of the Anno games to where like you have peasants and they have four basic needs. You fill those basic needs and you can promote them up to the next citizenry. Then the next citizenry has a little bit more complicated food requirements, a little bit more complicated fun requirements, a little bit more complicated educational requirements, and then you move up to the next tier and then the next tier in each different way you have to produce a different good you have to refine that good into something else you have to maybe trade there's a lot of different nuances that go into a lot of different things this game is a little bit shrunken down on that aspect and just you know lets you kind of micromanage a little bit of the gift shops and the and the restaurants and the clothing shops and stuff and and and, and i'll show i'll show that as well um but i just I just feel like the guy – it's, it's kind of like a first-person shooter dude um, giving his critique and analysis on a, on a 4X game to where, like, it's so involved and there's, there's so many different things you have to pick up to. It's kind of like, you know, someone that's like a Call of Duty expert and then make them play like, you know um, – like an XCOM, well, XCOM, XCOM's pretty cool, but like a, um, like an X3 reunion or an X3 Albion kind of like Let's Play to where like it just dumps you in this massive world and it's like, GG's, have fun, you know, figure it out on your own <laughs> kind of thing. And I think that, you know, he gave a negative review because, you know, ignorance or something. I don't really know. I don't know the guy. But let's go ahead and click on continue. And I'm in the second area right now trying to get five stars and complete my um, story missions. So there are three there are three factions. There's security, there's entertainment, and then there's science. And you have to kind of have a balancing act between quests and um, and fund funding and um, and reputation and stuff. The higher the reputation for each of the different guys allows you to then unlock the final quest for that area, and then you can do it. You get a lot of money, and you get like a building unlock. Now, this is a critique that this guy had um, for um, the game. Uh, let me let me actually I'm gonna go into my control room real quick here and actually go to the beginning one because there's less there's less danger in the beginning one see i'm almost five stars here and i have i have yet to do the other two um story missions so i have done these two areas i've unlocked this to go and do and i've unlocked the freedom um the the uh what you call it the um this is your sandbox there you go words <laughs> and the sandbox is like 100 percent free uh, which is really interesting. It's it's something that I haven't like started into, but any research that you do, any any genome stuff, any any technology you acquire, any buildings you unlock, it all transfers over to your sandbox play. And what your sandbox play is is this, is this big island that allows you to fundamentally just create a theme park designed how you want with no restrictions other than how much time you've invested in the single player stuff the single player challenges like this stuff um and it's just uh, look at this this is beautiful this is my little this is my little place that i've set up so 
I'm going to take you guys around and kind of show you, and you guys be the judge to see how like cool and amazing this game is while I still sip coffee. So we just got some fossils before when we pop back, so let me just go and show you that. So I'm going to click on the fossils. This is the fossils menu. So I sent an expeditionary team out to go gather specific kind of dino stuff. They returned with um, some platinum, which is just, you know, stuff that we can sell for extra income, which is amazing. Um, my, my colony here, or not my colony, but my, my, my park is doing really well for itself. As you can see, um, I've, ma I've made sure that um, my, all the people are happy and, and all the dinos are happy and well-fed and well-taken care of and stuff like that. And see, so I sent it out to do this. Um, the, I'm just going to call him the Cory, the Cory dino. Um, but we're going to go ahead and extract his DNA because, as you can see, um, this, is the, this is how much genome I have on them. And um, here's an Anki one as well. So I'm going to, you know, we're, we're furtherly increasing. As you can see, it's adding percentages to the quality of the dino. And that will lower the risk of us failing and also unlock genome things for gene manipulation later. So now we're in the explanation or the expedition map. And this is where you send your expeditionary forces to go to a dig site and gather things. It costs money, and there's different kinds of um, uh, dinosaurs that you that you want. So this is the the Ceratosaurus. Um, I'm just gonna call him Sarah. But um, all these ones I've like depleted because I've sent them so many times. But we're gonna go ahead and send it after um, this one because we're looking. Actually, wait, no, we want to do this one. So we're going to send, it's going to cost some money, and there's a little time to do. Now, this was a critique on our reviewer because he's just like, it's just tedious, mundane things or whatever. And it's just like, well, hold on. So if you want to get into the start, uh, the, the, the Jurassic World kind of lore, right, you have dig teams, and they find DNA of dinosaurs. Then they send it back, and then scientists take a look at the DNA and see if it's viable and um, they start doing gene manipulations and stuff like that, and they add it to their current genome makeups and blah, 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 right? This is only a two-minute mini game for you to get a lot of different information up front right away, you know, because you're going to, after this two-minute timer, you're going to get a little message saying, go into your fossils and either sell them or, you know, invest into them and stuff, and here's your research, and based off of how many places you've done in the story, you have a lot of different resources that you could do. We've already done a lot of different research here. Um, I'm not really really going to go into that because I feel like that doesn't do it uh, any any service. I planned on what I planned on doing, guys, is I was going to do the single player stuff. Like you know, say I needed to do this. I need to do this one. I need to do this one and this one, and then that's going to unlock all my stuff for me to do a let's play of our own sandbox, make it an amazing theme park. Because this game is just really cool, and I wanted to I wanted to have a lot of things unlocked for you guys to see all the different dinos. So, speaking of dinos, let me go over here. So I have let's go in my overview map here. This is kind of like a zoomed out management tree window here. Now, see, this guy said that this game wasn't even worth picking up, and already like you know from from me from a strategy guy. Oh wait, hold on. Whoops, hold on. <laughs> see, this is. So I'm going to press T here. This brings up my ACU center, and I'm going to use a transport team because I darted this guy. He's unhappy. This this guy does not like living over there. The population's too high, or um, I believe that guy's species of dinosaur is not um, – I don't have any more there because one of them died due to old age. So then he was upset because – I'll get into that um, let's, like, while, while he's transporting. See, they actually, they're actually transporting him, if we can get down in here. They're hooking him up. I don't know if you guys can see that too well, but there he goes. Yeah, that's really cool, in my opinion. Let me click on um, – oh, let me right-click here. There we go. Let me click on Terry. Terry is a Triceratops. Look at this. I just – like, I just – it's so cool. Look at the grass. Look at all these dinosaurs grazing. The detail. The It's just so amazing. I don't know, guys. Anyway, let me show you what I'm talking about with their like likes and stuff. So see, like, food? So he's currently eating. 
um, water, health, comfort, and comfort has to deal with, you know, whether or not there's a lot of grassland, whether or not there's forest, how much the population is. See, so we're kind of like getting a little bit too crowded here for this Triceratops. Um, and his social meter is just about good. So we don't really want to add any more dinos to this kind of area because we want to keep everybody happy. Oh no, we had a, a dinosaur die. Oh, right there. Probably of old age. Georgia, yep, she died of old age. So what's interesting about this is you actually have to remove the corpses yourself or else disease will start happening. You don't want disease because disease is bad, guys. So let me go into another menu here while we're, while we're here in this topic here. So I'm going to press R, and that's my ranger station. So you, you all have to build these buildings, by the way. And I have bought and purchased all three of the teams, and I've done some extensive research into them. Um, oh, not here. Let me do it right here. There. And this ranger rescheduling team allows me to do three, three things at once with my teams. So I'm going to select ranger team two. I'm going to add a task. And that task is I'm going to make sure that everybody is um, restocked on food so we filled up that task menu so there's a little bit of micromanagement guys but you know what it's a theme park game you're supposed to micromanage your theme park just say and i don't quite understand why there's like a massive amount of hate for a game that is designed in keeping your your populations happy keeping uh, or keeping your dinos happy keeping your citizens happy you know doing all this different stuff so okay so we we, we kind of maxed out our rangers so we're gonna let our rangers do our thing so let me take you now kind of like through all of our these are visitors these are tourists coming to visit i have hotels set up here and here and i have shops now see this is the gift shop so in the gift shop management you know, this is all about management and stuff. And if you're and if and if you're into management games, theme park games where you design like roller coaster tycoon or you know all those different kind of games, right? Coffee is delicious. Then you know what is to be expected. You you have a very limited situation here. Like I can choose of three options, right? I chose the night vision goggles, okay? And then of that, I said I want to sell it for a ten dollar profit. I have two staff members here, so that means I can, at maximum, service 435 people in my little gift shop. That makes a running cost and then my total profit bottom line. That's pretty easy. I can also set my management here and choose it for shopping. So then later when I'm in like the eyeball thing, I can click on shopping. It'll show me the demand for shopping and stuff and and everything there's also food i have yet to unlock the actual restaurants so we're using just fast food for that but same basic principle you've got three choices you can sell some food um and that keeps the the citizens happy because you're all about these five stars here see right here so you've got you've got to have your facility rating and your dinosaur rating we have 27 dinosaurs. They, we have a great variety and okay welfare. That means that you know there's been there's been a couple of hookups or something like that, and we're not taking care of our dinos the way that we should. Maybe we need to get a little bit better on that. But since we've already accomplished all of our goals for this area, we got the five star. Like in the matter of talking to you guys, I already gained six million. This is a very profitable island. I don't really need to tweak it any more than I already have. But you can left click on these and get the kind of breakdown that you want to understand what's going on. See, like transportation ratings a little low. That's because we don't have the lifts here because it's kind of like a small little area. You know, there, there's all sorts of different reasons on, on various different things. Here is the emergency shelter system. So in the event of bad weather or a dinosaur breaking out, um, then you can click open all shelters and then everybody will pour into all the different shelters um, nearest to them for safety. This is one of those um, Ceratosauruses. <laughs> I named him Cannibal. Um, just look at, oh wait, I did that wrong. Let's just press R. Just look at the, di the detail and oh look, did you just see him? He just ate that guy. <laughs> awesome. 
Um, and these guys, let me show, they have different sliders for different things. They're okay with a lot of population. They're not okay with a lot of the same dinosaurs. These guys are very territorial. And three is the max before they just lose their crap or their, and then just they, they start attacking. It's it's pretty interesting, but like the roars, the the mannerisms, like he told that dude what was up. He was like, "Hey, this is my spot," you know, kind of stuff. It's super like awesome, fascinating, you know, um, with just how they interact and everything. These right here are the viewing stations. So you build these viewing stations, and you see kind of like the meter there, um, and we can actually um, have a better um, viewing management. Uh, where is it? No, not there. Uh, 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 uh. dinosaurs vehicles no wrong wrong management tree there is like so much going on enclosures and then we've got two different types right now we've got the viewing gallery and the viewing platform now here there we go now i can see everybody's viewing so i have one viewing platform a little far away to cover over here we don't have the entire um area over here like kind of done up i was experimenting in my first kind of like playthrough on how big a pin needed to be and this is a little too much i could probably i could probably you know put a put a line right down the middle here and have another enclosure um over here all by its lonesome um but anyway um this this area i kind of made sure this is our main exhibit of our herbivores so i kind of made sure that most uh, most of the area was spotted and that's kind of like what you want to do with these kind of buildings so let me take you on over to um let's see oh let's let's go over here this is the reputation that i was talking about see we have to build reputation with these guys to unlock various different things see so we've completed the web we've completed the stuff oh you know i guess i could sit here in this place and build up the reputation to then get the restaurant i just noticed that the innovation center here um i thought that was all because every time you complete one of these quests you actually get a building unlock and this is the thing this is another critique that this individual gave us um about this um a, a tedious monotonous grind to unlock useless buildings for XYZ. You could totally tell the tone of voice uh, of this gentleman was completely hateful and not understanding that the whole purpose of one of these kinds of games is to start from nothing and to grow a dinosaur empire of, like, awesomeness. Like, so let me go over to the genome therapy place. Let me Let me send another thing over here. And just show you what I'm talking about. So we go over here. This this is a Hammond Creation Lab. You use the Hammond Creation Lab along with its upgrades here. Let's um, swap out here. We've got better we've got better things because of research. So uh, there we go. And we can actually increase. Well, okay, it's fine. So we can go over here to the hatchery and incubate dinosaur. Now these are all the dinosaurs I have collected thus far. I only have 11 out of 42. I've only been playing for nine hours. So it's a cool game. Like a lot of people, at least with the simulation world, from what I understand and what I, the people that I talk to is you, you don't want, it's not about the fast and the easy. It's about the long game, the short term, the short term goals for gratification, you know, cool, like really awesome graphics and animations and the dinosaurs have a social eco structure and all this stuff really awesome and amazing gotcha long-term goals is unlocking all of these amazing dinosaurs and building an in-game sandbox theme park that incorporates all of your dinosaurs in an eco-friendly environment to where i i want to put a big a big um a biodome or eco dome um, or an ecosphere, an eco place for them, the, uh, an exhibit in the center of my big in game sandbox theme park to where it's a natural breathing habitat of all of the dinosaurs, carnivores and herbivores, and them living together and, you know, fighting each other off and like all the different stuff. And like that's, that's what it's all about is creating 
an environment where the dinosaurs can interact socially and, and happily or not so. And I've had some not so friendly dinosaurs like freak out in a panic mode and break fences and like go on a rampage. And I had to like, you know, get into my helicopter, you know, and oh, speaking of that. So by the way, this game not only has the ability for you to just task them to do things, you yourself can take control of one of your ranger teams, excuse me guys, um, and go around and do it yourself. You don't necessarily need, um, if you if you got nothing going on, like we have nothing going on, no crises are going on or anything, I can sit here and I'm going to drive over to one of our, here we go, here's our pins. Ooh. And by the way, we're, we're 120 miles off of Costa Rica. So what's really awesome is the locals speak Spanish. And so like your radio station is all like, you know, really cool, you know, Hispanic-y um, or Latino uh, music. And it's really cool. It's really awesome and engaging and realistic. So we're going to go over here and we're going to manually, you know, refill that. And, you, you know, you're, you're like role-playing in your own little sandbox simulation game. This, like, look, that, that guy, we can press F for a camera, and we can take a screenshot. Oh, look at that. That was an amazing, amazing photograph, and I just got money for it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Look, we got a Triceratops. He's running around. We can, we can, um, we can do R to get the dart rifle out. And, uh, whoops. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> we can zoom in. Hi, big butter. Health boost. And it let us know that it didn't need to get um, any sort of health boost and stuff, which is super cool. So let's let's do that again. Look at these guys. Look at this dinosaur. He's just walking around. Look at the splashing. He's going around. There's a stegosaurus like over there. There's another exhibit that we have. It's just... It's about the experience, guys. That's what I'm trying to, you know, um, I guess, have a rebuttal or an argument of, uh, of dialogue with our, um, with our reviewer that was really negative about um, the game. You can also take flight, very much like our warplanes and um, Helleborn stuff. I am controlling this, guys. And now I can dart, if I had good aim, any of these guys... Um, and then put them to sleep. And then once I do that, then I can use the NPC transport mechanic and we could transport them to a new enclosure and stuff. This is all very lore-intensive, role-playing, immersion, uh, you know, stuff, which is so super cool. And the research and the effort that you put into all of your different biomes, um, each biome has its own strengths and weaknesses and challenges to uphold. This is the easy one. So what there's, you know, you get some torrential downpour, but it's not hurricane weather. You don't have to worry about much. Um, you just have to manage the happiness of all your all your dinos and, you know, um, manage the happiness of all of your, you know, um, visitors. And, you know, you have to manage your, your fossil expedition stuff like that we're not doing right now because, you know, I'm talking to you guys and we can just take a look at all that stuff. But let me actually, um, now that, now that we um, are done with that tangent, let me go back and show you um, the Hammond Creation Center and what I what I meant about um, the eco stuff. So see, I have 100% on some of these guys, and I'm working on getting 100% on the three new dinos or on some of the three new dinos that we found in the second island. This is from the second island as well. This is the Velociraptor. These guys are mad wicked lore specific too. These guys, they're... They are, I don't know how to describe them. I'm going to have to show them to you um, in on the second island before we end this kind of like uh, episode or video of just like kind of rebuttaling the terrible scathing review about this game. Like this game is massively in depth just as long as you are okay with, you know, the premise that this isn't necessarily about managing um, the people, it's about managing the dinosaurs. It's about researching and taking effort into manipulating the genome to get the correct dinosaur that you want. So let's go in that. Let's go ahead and go into the Triceratops and let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have researched 100% and we've unlocked all of these 
these four perks basically um, is what you want to call them. So I have chose a cosmetic arid pattern. Um, it's it's a it's a cosmetic um, thing to show or depict the location of where this dinosaur kind of was geographically in the world because there has been several different theories on the different skin pigmentations and all the different things of dinosaur lore and history and blah 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 right it's just a cool cosmetic effect we can choose the alpine effect and see it lowers it lowers the viability we've already done that um so it's not going to depict here but let me just go back up to the null gene to where it's just the regular the regular color pattern and you see our viability went up five percent but our really cool rating went down a little bit. See? So you kind of have to toggle. And that's just the cosmetic thing. So let's go into the attack. So, and these are all things that you research in your research um, menu stuff. And how you do that is doing quests and getting multiple different research facilities um, in, in some of these research aspects and everything. But as you can see, what we have applied right now is the tooth hardness. And that gives us, you know... A better defensive and attack stance with resiliency um, to kind of fend off predators and everything. Because I was I was kind of trying to you know genome everybody to kind of be in that in game state of everybody's in one massive um, you know biome and all of our tourists are seeing a live vibrant ecosystem of you know you know Tyrannosaurus Rex and you know Carnos and the Sarah the Sarahs and the Velociraptors and the Dillos and everybody's interacting and being fine. I can't, I don't know if I can do the Ankies because the Ankylosauruses, those guys, those guys are really temperamental, antisocial and hate other dinosaurs. They just like, like seriously, they just like to be with themselves and one other or else they get really super cranky and they start using their massive tail and beat down fences. No lie. It's really annoying. So, oh, we had it. We had death. No, that's not good. So, um, so yeah, all these different options, as you can see, modify your dinosaur to do certain specific things: increase lifespan, um, increase or decrease the. You know, the, everything has its own different kind of like quirk to it, and that's what's super cool. Like, you know, you want to have your lifespan up. See, I can get, I can do this one, um, but my viability goes way down. Um, you know, but it increases my lifespan almost nine years, which is super worth it if I have research into um, into the. Let me find this over here and let's let's get him out of here. Um, if you have research or not research, but the module for um, Triceratops is down again. Okay, so I'm gonna I need to make more Triceratops because that's two Triceratops that are down in in this pen so then our triceratops family is going to be bad um or a little bit cranky so in in our upgrades here see we don't have we don't have success rate here at all so we purchased more so th these are research in your research menus and then you can you know add them on they they require a little bit more power and that's another thing you got to manage your power um let's and that's another um ta oh, what was that what was that there is a demand high demand for shopping over here because there's no shopping near us so that gives us an indicator that we might want to you know grab a uh clothes shop and put it i don't have any space for a clothes shop <laughs> but you know like it, it you know it gives you details what you want you know based off of you know what we're going so here's the power Here's our kind of power grid that we got going on. But you can also later see that in the big map to where all our different connector nodes to. This is our electrical fence. I've also had to electrify this fence because we had we had some cranky dinosaurs that were breaking free and everything. And I to kind of try to subvert that, I, I made everything kind of electrical fence. But you can kind of see your power grid. You can, you can lay out the lines. You can do all this stuff. And again, if you guys are super interested in, in, in a Let's Play, I will totally start recording. But I was waiting to do the recording until after I kind of got more of the in-game stuff because the in-game sandbox, it doesn't require any money. And all it is is you just designing, managing, and running your end product, which I thought is was, was super unique and interesting um, because all of the struggles, all of the pain that you go through to complete those quests, to unlock, like, just look at this guy. 
Isn't that amazing? But like all of the struggle that you guys do to learn how to play the game in the slow step process of this world or this this island and the next island. So see, so this guy, he's going to make a first, he's going to he's going to run over and he's going to look at the food and he's like, "I am hungry." And he's going to eat. And see all these other guys, they have like social cues and like calls and stuff and everything. So so while while we're there, um let me just quick uh save because I don't want um that to be an issue here. And we're going to bounce over to my other island and I'm going to show you guys that one. So this one we're going to have to be a little bit more careful because I have velociraptors and let me tell you those velociraptors I any opportunity that they have to to um attack the fence to break the fence to attack people or to escape they will take it and i i must I, I i the velociraptors are like a pack species of dinosaur so they require you to have you know three or four of these guys so here is the next island that you get to which is 16 miles away from the first island that we have i added a train station guys this thing is super cool. I spent a lot of time yesterday developing um, this map. So hopefully we will have no interruptions while I show you. So you kind of start over here. Uh, no. Um, so let me just show you. We got the train system. I'm going to do, do a flyby here. So we've got hotel. This is kind of our main exhibit kind of area-ish. Um, and then it gets down over to here are more more hotels more shopping there's another um monorail station thing there here's a monorail going right now super cool um and then it goes down and it opens up into a big display to where we have a lot of our herbivores i haven't named much of these guys right now because i'm still kind of setting things up i'm still trying to complete the quest and everything guys here um but we've got you know some some viewing ports you're you're limited with where you can build and it's kind of a challenge to get all the tools because this place has hurricanes so you need to have storm defenses and that's what these are here so storm defenses are um a new kind of mechanic to the game that you unlock after doing some quests in the first island and when you first get here there's a hurricane and if you don't have storm protection then you lose power and you can't use your your ranger teams to go out and do anything really and it's really a struggle um because without power you don't you can't function your dinosaurs freak out and start breaking down fences but let me just click on the velociraptor here and let me show you while we're looking we can get the mannerisms do you see that? That's that call. And then they all kind of see he responds. And now he's going to go over there. It's just so cool. I actually named one of these. Uh, oh, he just did a call. And then there's another one over there that responded. It's super cool. But see, so they require a small pack of three to five guys. They like population. But they're super territorially aggressive. And it does not take long for these guys to lose their comfort. And once they get into the red bars, guys, they freak out and they start messing things up. So um, let's leave them alone. Let's go over here. See, so, yeah, I've got some more Ceros over here. And I had a really cool new dinosaur. I had to, in, in one of these storyline missions, um, I had to uh, heal um some dinosaurs from some illnesses here's the dillo look at this guy these are those this was the guy in the in the first original um jurassic movie that sprayed the really fat guy in the jeep and made him blind <laughs> i forget his name but he's a really cool um comedian actor guy um but anyway we go over here and this is let me show you we also had to heal this guy now i don't have i don't have this dino I can't make this dino, but I saved this dino um, from disease, and that's super cool. And she requires a special kind of feeder. And there's just I'm just I'm just saying, guys. I know I'm getting off of tangents about showing really cool dinos and everything, but I like the reviewer. I feel is wrong. I feel like he did a surface review 
didn't even look at it for very long and was biased against simulation or theme park games in general. This game blends well um, beautiful um, atmospheres, engaging environments, challenging things to overcome. Like when I first started this one, I chose the wrong buildings to build first because you only have a set amount of income to then you know fix your your um island situation and make a prop uh, prosper i screwed up the first go and had to restart the island because i did the wrong buy order of the different um you know the the different acu centers or do do i get an acu uh you know center or do i get a research station or do i get a fossil one do i get an expedition one because you only have about two million but each of the buildings are like four hundred thousand plus you know, so you really can only choose like four or five buildings in the beginning to then start making a profit. And if you're not making a profit, then you have no revenue growth. And it's just, it's just, it, to me, we had a di we had it, we had a dinosaur death. That's not good. Where are you, dinosaur death? Oh no, one of our velociraptors is down. No, our Sarah one. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll just, we'll just goodbye. You were, you were a great dinosaur, unnamed Sarah. Goodbye. <laughs> so currently right now i'm trying to prep for um the quests for the uh entertainment and the security they want me to basically you know get a sarah a velociraptor and a dillo in the same pen fighting each other and i have to keep them all alive because he's testing the strength of this of the electrical fence and if i complete it and if i'm successful i will unlock the heavy electrical fence which will allow me to keep things in like oh gee i don't know a tyrannosaurus rex because i only have the light ones right now and then i have a and then i have heavy um so these are your enclosures so currently right now i have the regular light steel fence the electrical light steel fence and then the heavy steel fence but after that mission you'll get the heavy electrical one so like i said guys i mean i don't want i don't want to throw sh too much shade on um on this guy because clearly he he's been reviewing a lot of different games and he he seems he seems like he's been in the gaming world he's not an ignorant you know idiot but i i feel like he he did the game a little bit disservice maybe he doesn't like the publisher maybe the publisher you know kind of did one of those um hello games things with no man's sky and promised a little bit too much like i said i didn't really follow this video game like all the promises and what they didn't do and oh my god and rage 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 i'm five you know kind of stuff like i i like i'm negating that so that's just like completely i wasn't following this game i saw a youtuber do like one and a half episodes of this ep uh, of this game and i was like you know i'm hooked i want to totally try this because what kid doesn't want to play with dinosaurs and this is so cool to be able like i have an almost two-year-old son so when he gets older, I can sit him in my lap, you know, and he was even looking at it yesterday, um, like dinosaurs. He wanted me to fight them because uh, he, he's, he's really into um, deer and big brown buffaloes. So he does like the, the rutting stuff because he sees it on the, the Planet Earth DVDs that we let him watch and everything. So he wanted to see the dinosaurs fight, which was really cute and, cute and cool. Um, but like, you know, totally a kid-friendly game. Um, especially if you're, um, if they're old enough to watch Jurassic Park, you know, they're totally, uh, uh, you know, old enough to play or watch you play this game. Um, because some of the micromanagement stuff is a bit intense if you don't know how to micromanage games. And maybe that is my crit uh, critic or critique on this critic who maybe didn't do a good job to then unlock his stuff. I have no problem, as you can see, in any of my, um, territories or any of my islands that i have currently played in i have had no problem of you know learning kind of like what the island needs for me to cater to it and then once i cater to that need and cater to my population's touristy attractions and stuff then look at the money that i have like it th this this one is better profit margin than the first one and that's how it should be is is you expanding your knowledge and you growing in your ability to 
um, you know, do things better, faster, more efficient, because the first island, you're learning everything. The second island throws in hurricanes, you know, so you have to get everybody in emergency shelters. And then you've got, you know, your velociraptors, like, really crabby that there's a hurricane, so they break a fence. And while everybody's running to their emergency shelters, you see velociraptors literally jump on them like the movie and kill your citizens or your tourists. I'm just saying, guys. You know, for for this game, I think it's an awesome. It, it's 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 worth it's a worth a buy. Not what the guy was rating, and I'm even kind of disappointed to the the Steam rating, which is a seven out of ten. Like I would at a minimum give this a seven, a minimum. Like that's if I'm cranky at the fact that you know my Velociraptors killed a whole bunch of people. And I lost a mission, which by the way, if I I've, I've failed the security and the entertainment mission at least twice because of that. You can't let civilians die while you test your fences, so that's like a precursor to terrible disaster, guys. <laughs> but what's really cool and what I'm really looking forward to here in the next um, bit for me, my personal game through, is this one right here. This guy, you like. Let's read the description. This place is a tropical paradise and well-suited for establishing our own operations. The weather is idyllic. However, overly ambitious developers have kind of screwed the economy of the place. And um, this, I believe, is the place where you can also um, learn the genome of the, ter the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So you actually get the T-Rex here. But I don't want to do that without the high... Um, the the heavy electric fence so that's why i'm waiting here <laughs> to complete all these different quests to then unlock all the different buildings let me show you that by the way let me just go into see so there's unlock we got to unlock this building unlock this building all these buildings you you do challenges you do missions you do reps see here in this island um so see i have everything here and then here um I have to complete this mission to then get this um, as well as, oh, and then this one right here. See, this one, medium power stations I unlock when I get my faction up here. So it's all. Oh, really? I don't think we can get to that. It's a goal. Sure, why not? <laughs> what are we currently at right now? Uh, yeah, I got like 12,000 more. I just add another shop or two and, and I'm golden. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of just kind of, it's, it's not really an episode. It's just kind of like a, a rebuttal, a review tweak, a, um, a, a, hopefully a friendly discourse between me and this individual. I actually tweeted at him too, because I saw a whole bunch of his, um, followers were very supportive in his, in his bashing of this video game and being honest. And it's just like, really? Well, do you, like, I, I, I told him, I was just like, do you even, you know, it, it sounds to me, like, I read your review, it sounds to me like, you know, you have an issue with simulation games. Oh, no. Storm. So let me show you what this is. Get in the shelters, people. Get in the shelters. Look at that. All they go, panic, 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 panic. But anyway, guys. Oh, that's going to be it for this episode of kind of like a review. And let me know, let me know in the description down below if you thought, if you thought this was helpful, if, um, if you disagree, if you agree, if you're going to check this out now or, um, anything like that, guys, I'm just looking for maybe like some civil discourse. Maybe we can have a conversational debate on whether or not, um, you know, I'm wrong or he's wrong because I don't, you know, the developers put a lot of time and energy and money into making this game and it's not like it's two people in a basement that it's from one of their mothers and, you know, the, the gameplay sucks and story's not engaging or any of that stuff. All of these things that he said in his, in his review can be rebuttaled with, well, maybe you just don't know how to play this game correctly because... You're supposed to be able to micromanage multi multi things. Multitasking is a thing. And if you can't multitask in a game that's multitask driven, that's about dinosaurs and keeping dinosaurs happy while also keeping people happy, while also going out and researching or finding fossils to then research their bio or their genome to then also research new technologies for your place and also complete quests to further your reputation with three different factions three separate factions which by the way if i complete this faction 
quest, it's going to lower these two guys, but increase this one. So it's a balancing axe times 100. And we got a fence broken. Ooh, 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 where? Ooh. Where? Fence. Oh, well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Ramble, ramble, ramble. <gasps> right there. Velociraptors are trying to get out. Red alert! Shields up! I'm going to have to stun him. Uh, yep. All right, guys. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode of whatever we're going to be doing. Sorry, it's not it's not Vampire today. It's not um, Shadow of War. It's just going to be this. I got to go to bed. I got to go to work. Work, work, work. The RL server is mean to me. All right, guys. Anyway, I'm bantering. See you guys later.